sure to like and subscribe, yeah! Hey kid, I'm about to tell you a true riches to rags story. Uh, don't you mean rags to riches? No, nope. this isn't a rags to riches story where someone is poor and gets rich. This is a riches to rags story where someone who was rich gets poor. Oh, it sounds sad. Actually, Dr. Dinosaur, that's the thing. It's incredibly inspiring and awesome. Uh, you're gonna need to explain how getting poor is awesome. Okay, fair question. Do you see that man on the cover? Oh, that one right there, holding the big pot of really yummy looking soup? That's the one. And when he lost everything, he found his life's true mission, which was creating food banks that would go on to feed millions of people around the world. Oh, oh, I, I know about food banks. Sometimes we collect cans uh, at, at school for the food banks. Yeah, uh, is, that, is that where people can go and get food for free? Yes. And cookies? Yes. And dino nuggets? Yes. And this is the true story behind the food banks, and it's called Food for hope. Wow, that sounds like it was a tough job. Yeah, I wonder how he did it. Well, you're about to find out. Here we go. Oh, and already the story is wetting our appetites. Burger, anyone? Perhaps a juicy orange or a petite cupcake? The cruel Arizona sun beat down on a ragged line of people that snaked away from a church door. John Van Hengel was in that line. And that's John right there. And you can see there are all kinds of people in this line. There are elderly people, there are kids, there are moms, there are fellows with their dogs, all kinds of people are in this line. The wait was long and hot because it's Arizona, but worth it. Inside was a dining room for the needy. The menu was boring, soup, rice, beans, powdered milk, but it was the difference between an empty stomach and being fed. And John knew the mind numbing ache of hunger. So did everyone here and they were grateful for the free meal. My numbing is right. When I'm hungry, I can't think of anything else. Imagine what it feels like if you're hungry all the time. I kind of am. In far away Wapham, Wisconsin, where John was born, few would have ever imagined him in a soup line like this one. He seemed to have been born lucky. His mom was a nurse and his dad owned a drugstore with an ice cream counter. His dad had a store full of ice cream? That's living the dream. He grew up to be handsome and athletic. After college, he went to California to play tennis with movie stars. A Born salesman, the money rolled in. He married, had two sons, and bought a home near the ocean. So far, so awesome. Then his luck ran out. Uh-oh. He lost everything. No! Oh, yeah. And for the first time in his life, John worried about his next meal. And the next. And the next. John liked people. He talked with everyone in the dining room, disabled veterans, the homeless, kids whose parents had to choose between rent and food, and their stories opened his heart. He found work at the kitchen and shelter in a cheap room above a garage and faith in prayer with Father Ronald at St. Mary's Church. That was a father who was helping serve the food at the church. With his simple life, John was no longer hungry, but it was not like his kitchen fed people well. Now he had heard kids clamor for fresh fruit and remember the citrus orchards east of town. So he drove out in a battered pickup truck and convinced the growers on these farms to let a volunteer crew harvest grapefruit that would rot on the ground otherwise. They gathered so much extra that John 
drove it to other charities. Oh, it's like a form of recycling. Uh, how do you mean? Oh, because no one was using the fruit, so they gave it to someone who could use it. Oh, I see your point. And besides, fresh food is a terrible thing to waste. It was a joy to see everyone enjoy the fruit. Now nothing would just lie on the ground and rot. Now people would eat it. John wanted to feed more people. He just didn't know how yet. During one grapefruit delivery, he heard an unemployed mother boast that she got food at a special store. Her kids ate like the rich for free. Now, John thought she was making it up, you know, like, oh, that sounds way too good to be true, ma'am. But she took him, practically dragged him to a supermarket dumpster. Look, she ordered, and John peered inside. This is the dumpster, and it was overflowing with banged up cans, crushed boxes of dry goods, and piles of bruised but edible vegetables. This was her store. She was only sorry she couldn't put the extra in a bank. A bank, you say? John never got her name, but he would always give her credit for the idea about to come. He rushed over to St. Mary's, excited by the possibilities. We need a food bank, he exclaimed, a place to share food that's being thrown out. It's a great idea, Father Ronald agreed. Do it. Hold on, John protested. I already cook at the mission. My plate is full. The priest smiled. You heard the call, John. Decide if you want to listen. Whoa, the priest just gave John a truth bomb because John, what? One, saw the problem. Two, envisioned a solution. But would he put in the work it took to make the dream come true? Would he answer the call? Let's see. Six months later, ah, John opened the St. Mary's Food Bank in an abandoned bakery. That's food bank number one. He scrawled a quote from the Gospels, that's the Bible, on a board above his rickety desk, adding his own twist. The poor we shall always have with us, but why the hungry? Oh, storyteller, yes, Dr. Dinosaur, what does that mean? Oh, to have poor but not hungry. Well, it means, Doug, that some people just don't have enough money to have extra things. They can't buy the newest sneakers. They may not be able to afford a house of their own. But that's no reason to go hungry when there's so much food around us. Oh, so you could be poor, but it doesn't mean that you should have an empty belly? Exactly. Oh, I like that. And here we see the workers, all volunteers, and look at all the volunteers preparing the shelves, stocking everything by category, looking happy because, of course, they know they're about to do a lot of good. And, oh, look at John. Ah! having to do some serious cleanup work and maybe moving the spider to another location before they could open this food bank. Now, John needed a lot of food to help the needy of his community. He found it in supermarket warehouses. Now, he looked like a beggar, but his message to the managers was powerful. Don't discard what you can't sell. Give it to the hungry. Remember, they were tossing out the cans because they were banged up or the boxes because they were crushed or imperfect. No more. Donations rolled in. The cases of dented canned anchovies, boxes of broken spaghetti, and one memorable day, 5,000 squawking chickens. <laughs> No, Sharon, I'm not going to send you to a food bank. Because then, who would tell me the crossing the road chicken jokes? Chickens, they're very sensitive. St. Mary's distributed 125 tons of food to kitchens and food pantries the first year. 125 tons. That's... 
I mean, that's a lot. It ran on volunteer labor. And to John's delight, his grown up sons came to help him. That's a big deal because that was a family reunion. And I bet his sons were super proud to see their dad who had gone so down on their luck doing something so important. They found takers for everything, even the chickens. Now, a government agency offered money to spread the idea. That's right, the US federal government saw John's idea working so brilliantly that they offered money to make the program even bigger. John didn't want to change his humble life. He just wanted to feed more people. So he named the new charity Second Harvest. But you're not gonna believe this. He never accepted a paycheck. Now, the Second Harvest, which is now today known as Feeding America, it opened dozens of food banks across America. More food arrived than he could ever imagine. 37 railroad cars of discontinued cereal, 2 million bottles of discolored juice. I drink it. 17 trailers of frozen trout. And on another memorable day, a million chocolate Easter bunnies. Wow, that was an excellent day. That was an excellent day. Smiling volunteers found takers for everything. Even the bunnies, uh, especially the bunnies, especially the bunnies. John traveled the world to open food banks, seriously opening them all over the world. But he never forgot those being fed. He worked to the end and talked to young and old at dining rooms and pantries because that's where he would take all his meals too. When a first grader heard that the frail man sitting on the bench in thrift store clothes and white painted shoes was the father of food banking, he shook John's trembling hand. You did good, he said. That is food for hope. <laughs> oh, I know <laughs> you said that this was not a sad story, but it, it made me sentimental. It made me a little sentimental too, because it was so beautiful and from the heart. And, and, he, and he helped all those kids who didn't have chocolate before, and then they had chocolate and dino nuggets. And our eyes are a little bit full because we know that when you have a full belly, you can face the day with hope, which is what food for hope is all about. And kid, I hope that you see how one person can make a huge difference and that big difference maker can be you.